The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth remain silent before him. We are walking in the light. It's a beautiful light. Oh, come where the new drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. It's Jesus, the light of the world. Our the herald angels sing. Jesus, the light. the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he is a marvelous thing. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sing for grace. The joyful noise that we will make this morning is page 185. There is a name I love to hear. In your hymnals, 185. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its words. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. We'll sing all four verses, 185, in your hymn. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its words. It sounds like music. The sweetest name on earth, it tells me of a Savior's love, who died to set me free, it tells me of His precious love, the sinner's perfect free, it tells the one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe. To the Lord, the Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Eternal Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beauty of one more day. We thank you, Lord, that you allowed us to get up this morning with reasonable health and strength. 
with a portion of our sanity. And Lord, with a grateful spirit that we can get out of bed, we thank you. Lord, we thank you that we have food to eat this morning, whether we chose to eat or we're going to eat later. We have food. Lord, we thank you that we had a bed to lay in. Lord, we thank you that there was no gun to our head and no military outside our door. We had peace, Lord. You've given us a place where we can rest, we can meditate, and we can serve you without anyone stopping us. The only one stops us from praising you is us, Lord. The only one that stops us from giving you glory is us. Lord, don't let us get in our way. Let us show gratitude. Let there always be love in our attitude. Lord, when they fight and fuss, let us show them how they can have peace. So we thank you for that name that we love to hear. We whisper it. We say it silently. We shout it when we have to. But we thank you for that name that's above all other names. Because that name died for us. Because that name suffered for us. Because that name pleaded to the Father for us. So Lord, this morning, we thank you for fathers on Father's Day. We thank you for our Heavenly Father. We thank you for earthly fathers. Sometimes the mothers had to be the fathers, Lord. Sometimes the uncles had to be the fathers. Right. Or somebody down the street in the barber shop. Right. But you always provided wisdom for us, Lord. You always gave us a role model we could look up to. We may not have done it, but you provided it. There was some old gentleman, Lord, that was willing to point to you. And so we thank you, Father, for those men and those women who gave us godly admonition and showed us what we should do, what we could do, what we ought to do. Because they told us to follow the Christ. To all those fathers who did the best they could, with what they had, we say thank you. Lord, bless our service today. Bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Be your words and be your meditation and be your wisdom. If you do that, Lord, we'll leave here better than when we came in. And for that, it's a good thing. We pray these things in, <coughs> in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord. O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. O Lord. Incline thy ear to us and grant us thy peace. Amen. Our second selection this morning is Time is Filled with Swift. Transition. 513 in your hymnal. 513 in your hymnal. Time is filled with swift transition. Not a earth unmoved can stand. Build your hope on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. We'll sing all four verses. Time is filled with swift transition. Not a earth Not this world 
wars and riches that so rapidly decay seek to gain the heavenly treasures they will never pass away oh to his hand God's unchanging hand oh his hand God's unchanging hand be When your journey is completed, if to God you have been true, fair and right the home of glory, your enraptured soul view. Oh, God's unchanging hand, oh, to his hand, God's unchanging hand, be Scripture reading this morning comes from the book of St. Matthew, chapter 10, starting at verse 24. Chapter 10 in St. Matthew, starting at verse 24. Jesus is still teaching. He is still sending his disciples out to a world full of wolves. He's preparing them for when he leaves, that they may stand and fight the good fight. A student is not above his teacher, nor a servant above the master. It is enough for the student to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If the head of the house has been called Bezabub, if the head of the house has been called evil, how much more are the members of his household? So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak it in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body. And put you and put both into hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your Father. And even the very hairs on your head are numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. This is the Word of God for the people of God from all that dwells below the skies. From all that dwell below the sky, let the out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. My soul be on thy God. Ten thousand foes arise and hold some sin of resting heart to go our Savior said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, and with all thy soul. This is the first and great commandment, but the second is much like it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. I just want to begin
Lord Chaplain, God bless you. Are there any announcements to come from anyone? Anything at all? Then you have a lot. I'd like to say Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day from the Sisters of Owen Chapel to all the brothers and men of Owen Chapel. And I have a gift for you. <coughs> Reverend Robinson, since you're my dad. All right, I'll take it since I'm your dad. <coughs> well, there you go. Thank you for my gift. And there'll be more um, for all the men of the church. There'll be a gift cup for you also. Um, just let us know. Um, we we'll um, we'll we'll be able to get that to you. Thank you. Any other announcements? Anything at all? Uh, for those of you who are not aware, we will have our annual conference uh, on Zoom. Uh, it will be uh, in, on the internet. Uh, many things are going to be canceled this year uh, because of COVID-19. And what our main goal is to protect ourselves and people around us. So August 12th, 13th and 14th, we will have prepared our reports. We will have sent them to the conference. Uh, we will answer questions that the bishop has for us, uh, and we'll do all of this online. Amen? For those of you at that time who want to watch the conference or be a part of it, uh, we are connected, thanks to our IT person, uh, with the conference, and we'll be able to see some of them and some of them will be able to see you. It's August 12th, 13th, and 14th. Uh, we will have an annual conference, but we don't have to go to Phoenix, amen. Uh, we'll send in the things that are required of us, and we will answer the questions that will be asked us, and hopefully we'll be in compliance, and God will be happy with what we have done. If there are no other announcements, I, uh, I encourage you uh, like many of you have done, uh, to send any contributions or tithes that you have to me, uh, to the church, or give me a call. I'll come pick them up, as I've done many times. Amen. Holy Spirit, fall on me, Holy Spirit, fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall for me. Holy Spirit, fall on me. Love of Jesus, fall on me. Love of Jesus, fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall, fall on me. Holy Spirit, fall on me. Again, to those in attendance and to those who are watching, uh, Happy Father's Day. I'd like to speak to you briefly on the subject, the important lessons of life. The important lessons of life. There was an old woman who lived alone and, and as she became older, she became more lonely because the people that she knew people that she was close to had died off and there weren't very many friends and neighbors to come and visit her. There were some young girls in the neighborhood, like they are in most neighborhoods, who wanted to tease the old woman. We, we're like that sometimes. We, we like to tease folks. So they said, we're going to fool this old woman. Uh, we're going to get a bird and we're going to catch that bird and take it to the woman. And we're going to say, old oh, woman, they tell us that you, you are wise. What are we going to do with this bird? Are we going to kill the bird? 
or are we going to let the bird go? So they did as they said. They captured the bird and they went to the old woman. The old woman answered the door and came out. They said, old woman, what are we going to do with this bird that we have? They tell us that you're wise. Are, are, are we going to crush this bird and kill it? Or are we going to let it go? Now, you don't get to be an old woman by being stupid. You don't get to be an old woman unless you trust on somebody besides yourself. You don't get the wisdom of heaven by leaning on your own understanding. So the woman didn't answer them right away. She thought about it for a minute. She looked the girls right in the eye and she says, whatever you do, it's in your hands. There are important lessons in life that make a difference of how you learn and how you grow. If you don't learn, you don't grow very well. One of the most important lessons that you can learn is that you can learn from everything that's around you. You can learn from everybody who's in front of you. If you are open, everything and everybody can teach you something. But you have to have eyes to see. You have to have ears that are ready to hear. You have to have a heart that's ready to understand. And then you have to have the spirit which is ready to receive insight and illumination from a higher source. Holy Spirit, tell me what to do. Holy Spirit, show me where to go. Lord God Almighty, give me your will. The poet says it's not until it becomes real dark in a dark time, that's when the eye really begins to see. Think about it. When you have lost something precious to you, your eyes are open. Oh my goodness. That was good. He was good. She was good. The situation was good. And now it's changed. Hmm. I've only been more appreciative when it was around. You see, when you lose something, then it becomes valuable to you. Because what you have now, you take for granted. When it gets real bad, they tell me that even the atheists in the foxhole start to pray, oh Lord, have mercy on me. When it gets real bad, when it's so dark, you can't even see your thoughts. That's when you wake up and you realize had it not been for God's love, you wouldn't have made it that far. When death and depression are on one hand and you can't see your other hand, the scripture says, Knock, and I will open the door for you. Knock, and I'll show you a way where there is no way. So, knock. If you don't think your dreams will come true, and many of us have gotten and we want to give up, all of a sudden, God says, ask. You have the power to articulate. You can make your own reality. Lord, this is what I want. This is what I'm willing to wait for and work for. I'm asking you, Lord. Now, sometimes God will give it to you quickly and sometimes you gotta wait a little while but he says knock and he says ask sometimes you can't find your way from one day to the next that's when you have to ask for a new way seek that's what Jesus said don't look at me if I seek and you shall find the seeker is always looking for something better the searcher is the one who's going to find something. So seek, Lord, for what you make of me. Let me search for you. Lift up my thoughts. Lift up my thoughts. And let my mind and my body follow. I'm going to give you three points and then I'm going to turn you over to the spirit. Is that all right? Jesus teaches as a master teaches. And he tells his disciples, the student is never greater than the teacher. The student 
is never greater than the one who's put above. You have to be willing to learn from wisdom. Don't judge. Don't judge what you should learn about. Sometimes God gives us lessons, gives us people, and we're ready to fuss at the people before they even finish giving the lesson. Amen? So busy arguing with him, you can't hear what the other person is saying. You can't even wait until the sentence is finished and you're ready to fuss. And you never know what that person would have said. So God gives you lessons that will teach you to be better. Look, listen, learn, grow, shine. Your faith is tied to the faith of your teacher. If you bring truth to some folks, some folks will attack you. Well, you really should do this. Don't tell me what I should do. If I were you, I would go. Don't tell me where, where to go. They're going to criticize you, no matter what you do. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You try to help, and they jump all over you. i tell you something else. They're going to lie about you. Uh, they're going to threaten. Anybody here ever been threatened? Huh? Threatened. Some of them will attempt to harm you. Some of them will make plans to eliminate you. We got to do something about this. Jesus, everybody's following after him. We got to get rid of him. Jesus said, if they did it to me, they're going to do it to you. Everyone does not handle the truth very well. But as a child of the king, you have to tell the truth. And you have to live the truth anyway. It's not easy. It's not convenient. And yes, sometimes they'll come after you. But I'm asking you, before you criticize, <clears throat> learn to actualize. What's that, what's that mean, Pastor? Before you criticize, learn to actualize. There was a, a family that walked into a McDonald's back east, and it was cold. And when they went in, they saw at the end of the, the row that they were sitting down, an old, scrungy man. He, didn't smell so good. And he wasn't dressed real good. And, and so the mother of the family made sure that her children were, were protected. And as it looked that like, he, he, he didn't have much in front of him. In fact, he was in McDonald's just to stay warm. Amen? He was cold! And he was in there just to stay warm. But the baby in the family, not quite a year, the baby was fixed on this homeless person, this person who we would consider, what they say when I was young, a skid row bum. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Didn't look so good, didn't smell so good, not kept, but he had the brightest, most sparkling eyes. And that's what the baby saw, one years of age transfixed on this man across the room with sparkling eyes. And they made a connection. The baby smiled, the old man smiled. The baby smiled, the old man smiled. And the mother got a little bit upset. And so she finished her food and took her family out. And then all of a sudden it dawned on her. The baby was still looking for the man. Still looking over her shoulder where this old man was. And it dawned on her. I have a family, I have a home. I have everything I need. And this man doesn't even have a cup of coffee to drink. So she went up to the counter. She bought him a cup of coffee and a sandwich, and she took it over to him. And she said to him, I'm sorry that I didn't greet you, but would you allow me to bring you a cup of coffee and something to eat? Because my child has seen something in you that I didn't see. The man smiled even more. And when she walked out of there, she was a different person. A child, a child should leave them. A child saw something good where the parent couldn't see it. Before you criticize, learn to actualize. Do everything that you can do 
to who you could do it to, when you can do it to make things better before you point a finger, lift a hand. Second point, don't worry about those who can destroy the body. What? I want to protect my body. Don't be concerned with the person who can destroy the body. The body is just a shell, amen? It's just a vessel, it's just a container. It holds God's breath and it holds God's spirit until it doesn't. It's just a container. And one day the container will be empty and then put the container away, amen? But while you have this container, while you have the breath of God in you, where you have the light of God in you, you should use it to do something that you have power. Right now, one day you won't have any power. Don't focus on foolishness. Don't concentrate on what man can do. Concentrate on what God can do. Amen? Don't, don't worry about what your neighbor is doing until you pray for them. Today you have life and you have it in abundance. You have the power of the Holy Spirit that allows you to sing. Amen? You have the power right now to pray. Now you may not pray, but you have the power to do that. That's a gift that you have from God. You can use that power to lift somebody up. You can do it. You have the mental ability to laugh and to love and to help somebody other than yourself. Amen? You Right now, you can do that or, or not. But you have the power now. One day you'll be laid out and that's all you'll be able to do. Just lay. Now you can lift up. Now you can say, you can praise, you can go and help somebody. Have you loved somebody yet today? Not too late. <laughs> Have you prayed yet today? It, it, it's not too late. Have you helped somebody today? It's not too late. Have you thanked God that you got out of bed this morning, got dressed, had a chance to eat, and saw a new day? Have, have you given praise to that? Well, you take it for granted. Third point, almost done. There are no secrets from God. What you whisper in the dark will always come to the light. The old folks used to tell me, a little bird told me. <laughs> a little, little bird told me. What you whisper in the dark, what you gossip to somebody, one day will come to light. If you have anything to say, say something that's worthwhile. Make it good news. Make it something that's uplifting. And don't concentrate on the foolishness of man. If God has given you something to say, say it. Now, if it's just in your mind, be careful. <clears throat> what you throw out there has to come back to you. Jesus tells his disciples, man can only do so much. But with God, all things are possible. If you want to do more, love more, and create more, and help more, and be more, you have to be like those winners. A winner has a mentality to choose what God wants. How do I know what God wants? A loser finds ways to whine, to find fault with everybody and to every, and everything. You have to learn to be a winner. You have to learn to win first in your mind and then everything else follows. Whether you win or lose, you will have these lessons and you will repeat these lessons over and over again until you learn them. Do you all believe me? Some of you've had your head bumped many times. Sometimes you make mistakes over and over again. You wonder why you have to, because you didn't learn the lesson. And God will keep teaching you until you learn. Finally, the problems of the world are not the problems of the world. The problems of the world are the problems of the self. Yes, you get a chance to shine. Well, whether you shine or not, that's not God's fault. You can be a child of God, or you can be a disciple of the dark. It's your choice. You choose that. You have a choice to be enlightened and awaken, or you can lean on your own understanding and be frustrated. Look at the seven deadly sins. 
There are probably more than seven, but just for the sake of illustration, let me give you seven that are well known. Pride, greed, wrath, envy, lust, gluttony, sloth. These principles are characteristics that can lead you away from joy and from peace. Not just you, but everybody. So you, 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 we're in the world now, but we don't have to be other. We have a choice to shine. We have a choice to do something better than just to be prideful and to be greedy and to be angry and to envy people and to be lusty and to eat too much, oh, I'm sorry, and to be lazy. Those are the seven deadly sins. There are probably more, but if we just work on those, we'll go a long ways to being better. So you can learn about the worst of things or you can learn about the best of things. God has shown you in his scriptures, in his wisdom, in his history, there's some people who made some mistakes. And he wants you to learn, don't go the way that they went. Sometimes he gives you an example so that you won't be like that son who left his father, took all his money, went off, and lost it. He wanted his money. I don't know if it's pride or greed. He took his money and he, and he wasted it on a riotous living. I don't know if that's gluttony or love. But what he did was he wasted all the substance that his father gave to him. And he found himself with the pigs. And he came to himself and said, I'm going to go back to my father's house as a servant. Not as a son, not as a favorite person, but as a servant. I'm going to go back and beg for my for father's forgiveness. He learned his lesson. Sometimes you have to do that. You have to do things that you don't always agree with. Sometimes you have to compromise. Sometimes you have to learn to go along, to get along, until you learn the lesson of what God wants you to do. Sometimes you have to go the extra mile. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to, yeah, you, sometimes you have to. You have to go the extra mile. You have to go out of your way to show people that it can be done. A lot of people said, I, I, I can't do that. Sure they can. But they got to put one foot in front of the other. They have to have the willingness to say, I'll try. Sometimes you have to be that Bible. You have to be that scripture. You have to be that role model to show them how to do it. Everybody can't love like you do. Everybody can't give like you do. Everybody can't be patient like you do. Sometimes you have to let the other person win the argument. Why? Well, sometimes they just need to get it out. That's what Jesus did. He didn't have to win every argument. He just told them, here's what the Father wants you to do. Well, well, Jesus, Moses said that we can, we can take a stone and kill this woman that we got in adultery. You can't. He didn't fight with him. He said, okay, the one who's perfect, you pick up the stone and you kill this woman. Well, they dropped the stones because they still needed to work on their own stuff. Amen? There's stuff that we need to work on. We need to work on our pride and our envy and our jealousy and our gluttony and our sloth and our lust. We have to work on us before we work on someone else. That's a lesson before you change anybody else, before you tell somebody else what they need to do, you need to work on you. The master wants us to learn our lessons before we go teach to other people. It's always been this way. What you do is in your hands. What are you gonna choose? What are you gonna do with your hands? What are you gonna do with the hands of pride? Jesus said, humble yourself. If you humble yourself, your pride becomes smaller. If you're greedy, he says, learn to be content with what you have. Amen? Learn to be thankful for what you got. And if you have great wrath and you're angry and fussing all the time, he says, you better learn a little patience. Since I was patient with you, I expect you to be patient with other people. Some of us have envy. I wish what I had what he had. I wish I could get what she had. I wish I could. Let envy go. 
just thank God that you have what you have. Now, when we get to lust, people don't like to be told about their lust. They don't want you to tell them what they can't have. When they... But Jesus said, you, you, you need to have a chaste mind. You have to sometimes withdraw from the world and not always worry about your satisfaction and your pleasure. But be a role model for the Christ. Some people eat too much. So for Jesus, he says, learn to be temperate. Eat so that the body is sustained. Not that it's broken. Eat so that the, the body can function healthily. Eat well. Eat what I've given you. But be temperate. Eat sometimes. Don't eat sometimes. Amen? <laughs> Drink sometimes. Sometimes refrain from drinking. Always exercise. Get enough water. And for those people who are slothful, well, I was going to do it, but I just think I'll sit here today. I was going to do it, but, you know, I'll do it next week. I was going to do it, but no, I, I, I'll just wait until I feel better. You have to be diligent. I'm just telling you what the scripture says. Don't, don't take this out on me. To get away from those things that will hurt you, you need to do those things that will help you. And that's what Jesus was talking about, humility, contentment, gratitude, temperance, diligence. Forgiveness. You will never, ever get people's forgiveness if you won't forgive them. The very important lessons of life are always available to you if you will study them. And then once you've studied them and you've mastered them, then you can go teach somebody else. What the songwriter says, you gave me hands to reach out to man to show him your love and your perfect plan. You gave me ears. I can hear your voice so clear. I can hear the cries of sinners. But can I wipe away the tears? Lord, I'm available to you. Use me. Lord, I'm available to you. I empty myself and send your spirit so that I can do what I need to do. I'm available to you. Once you become available to God, God will fill you up. But if you lean on your own understanding, then your hands are what hold you. Let God's hands hold you. Your hands are not big enough to even hold an idea most times because it's always reaching for something else. Let God hold you up by the hollow of his hands, much larger, much stronger, much more beneficial. God, we thank you for the lessons that you've shown us. Lord, we thank you for, for keeping us from falling in that pit that was right in front of us, but you opened our eyes just in time. Lord, we thank you for take, taking temptation away from us right when we were getting ready to go into the devil's hands. Lord, we thank you for calming us down from our wrath and our envy and our lust and our sloth by showing us that we have to be what we want. Lord, thank you for the contentment of knowing that you've always got our back. Now, Lord, bless us to listen to you, to listen to your lessons and make ourselves available to you. If we do that, Lord, we'll be better when we leave here than when we came in. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You've been listening to uh, the people at Owen Chapel in the church. Uh, we, we send blessings to you on this Father's Day. We hope to see you again soon. And may God's Spirit always teach you what you need to learn. Amen. George, I earned my money.